Hello and welcome to another pencil review slash comparison. Um, today we are looking at three Tombow pencils, um, kind of spanning. Well, I don't. I don't know that I can say they span their range of like cost and quality, but they definitely do span a range of cost and quality. So let's go with that. So the three that we're looking at today are the Tombow Mono 100. Let's see if I can get this to focus. I guess there we got the Tombow Mono 100, which is in a 2B hardness. And then the Tombow Mono Professional, I think is how I keep seeing this on websites. Um, this one is in a B hardness. And then the Tombow 8900, which is also in a B hardness. Um, unfortunately, I only have the Mono 100s in the 2B, so it's not a super exactly equal comparison, but it's a decently equal comparison. It's not as if, you know, one of these is like a 3H or something. So um, I'd say they're pretty close. So let's talk a little bit about um, kind of the outsides, the um, build of these pencils, and then we'll talk a little bit about the writing quality and then how I would rank them based on some different features. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the 8900. I'll move these other guys out of the way. So the 8900 is this kind of weird green color and I don't know that it's showing up quite true on my camera because um, of the daylight and stuff and I couldn't quite get the white balance to work right. It's not this vibrant in real life. It's definitely more of like an olive drab sort of color, um, like a pea soup green kind of color. But it's that green color, and then it has this gold um, stamping with the name and everything on it. It's it's really nice. Like it looks to be pretty um, pretty good stamping, not like horrendously um, off center or just like poorly done. And then it has the grade marker. And then if we rotate, let's see, around a third of the way, it says for general writing in white, and then again with the grade marker. And then if we rotate it one more time, it says the grade marker again, and then it has the barcode. And I know none of us love barcodes on pencils, but all three of these pencils have barcodes, so it's just kind of the way it goes. Um, my only annoyance with this one is that this barcode is like way down at the middle of the pencil rather than up closer to the end. So like it will take quite a while to sharpen away that barcode, but you know, that's how it goes. It's a hex pencil. Let's see if I can rotate that around. It's a hex pencil and that probably won't focus that close. Nope. There we go. Hex pencil. It's a, it's not a sharp hex, but it's not a super rounded hex either. Like you definitely feel that it's a hex. Um, the wood is pretty good on it. There, maybe. There we go. Um, I actually couldn't find information on these three pencils as to what wood they were made out of. I looked on Tombow's website. I looked on all the pencil websites I could find. Um, and I couldn't find anyone that specifically said what kind of wood they were made out of. So, um, but it looks to be cedar. Um, let me smell one of them. I don't know. It doesn't like smell super strongly of cedar, but it definitely looks like it's cedar. So if that is incorrect, please let me know and I will, um, do whatever needs to be done to correct that. But anyway, so this is the 8900. And then let's go to the, this is the Mono Professional. So this one, um, it just says homograph mono on here, but I keep seeing it online as the mono professional. And it's pretty easy to recognize it online because it has this white band on the bottom. So it's pretty distinctive. So I'm assuming that that's the same pencil. This one, oh, I forgot to mention it. So no eraser. Also no eraser. None of these pencils have erasers um, because they are not American pencils and American pencils tend to, American and German pencils, I think tend to be the ones that have erasers, but mostly American. So uh, this one has this really like beautiful shiny black lacquer on it. Again, gold printing on this side. And again, very nicely done, very um, well centered and you know, well, um, I guess well defined. And then it has this kind of golden bronzy colored band and then this white band and then the end. And the end actually is kind of capped off. So that's a really nice touch versus just a, like a bare end. So then it says the grade there. Then if we rotate it around a third of the way, it says made in Japan for high precision grafting, drafting. And it says that in gold rather than the white from the 8900. Again, it says the grade. 
And then if we rotate it again a third of the way, it has the grade again, and then there's the barcode. And you can see here, this pencil, uh, I think, has only been sharpened maybe once or twice. So you can see that the barcode is pretty close to the end and should be sharpened off. You know, by the time you get halfway down the pencil, you no longer have to deal with that barcode. Again, this is a hex. This one feels slightly less sharp of a hex than the 8900, but, you know, of course that could just be me. And... Again, I couldn't find information on exactly the, no, oh, come on, come on, buddy, you can focus, on exactly the type of wood that that's made out of, but I'm assuming cedar. Oh, there we go. I'm assuming cedar, kind of based on the looks. Um, sharpens up easily, the 8900 sharpened up easily as well, no problem, as long as you have a decent sharpener. And then moving on to the Mono 100. So this one, again, has this um, very shiny, oh, come on, my camera is just not, not having it today. It's, I think it's the daylight reflecting off of the floor is making it not want to focus very well. There we go. So this one again has this nice shiny black lacquer on it and the gold foil printing, again, very high quality. It has the grade here with some cute little asterisks by it, yay. Um, has this shiny gold band and then the end has this kind of like pinstripe on it and it's again capped similar to the Mono Professional. If we rotate it around a third of the way it says made in Japan for high precision graft drafting and then again has the grade and then another third of the way has the grade again and then once again the barcode up here. Um, something interesting to note about this one so this is a hex pencil right but this end part is round. Uh, it goes from a hex and then you have this band and then it's round. And something that is annoying to me, and I don't know, it probably won't show up on video, but there's kind of a, oh, maybe you can just barely see it there. There's a little bit of a step between this band and then the barrel. Because, you know, of course you're putting something round over something with corners. And it's a little bit rough. I wouldn't call it sharp. It's certainly not gonna like hurt you or anything, but it's a little bit rough. And it grates on my nerves just a little bit. Like, I don't like that rough spot. I really wish they would have just left it hex all the way down or, I don't know, or done, done this better somehow. But I, I don't like that. Okay, so that's the three pencils. And... Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about how they write. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my notebook. And let's go ahead and move this guy up and point it down. And now you can see my little tripod thing, but you know what? We're going with it. This is, this is how we do. So all of them wrote pretty well. They all write decently smoothly. Um, you know, none of them feel super gritty or anything. Granted, these are, um, two of them are B grade and the other is a 2B. So you'd expect that they would write pretty smoothly and darkly, darkly, whatever. Um, so going down the line, the Mono 100 didn't smear much at all. And this is a pretty smooth paper. Um, so of course a toothy paper would give you less smearing and less erasability as well. So, but the Mono 100, which is the 2B, didn't smear much at all and erased pretty cleanly with my little pencil shaped Dixon eraser. Then the Mono Professional, again, didn't smear very much and erased relatively cleanly. And as a reminder, the way that I do this, for the smear test, I go back and forth and I count to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, etc., like that for each one so that it's even. And then for the erasing, I take my little eraser and I go back and forth one time and that's it. So of course, you know, if I kind of rubbed at it more, like I could probably erase cleaner, but that way it's the same for all of them. And then onto the 8900, that one did smear a little bit, not a ton, um, not to the point of being unreadable, but enough that you can see there's a little bit of a gray halo around it, but also erased pretty well. Um, and here you can kind of see, I guess, the difference in the darkness between the three of them. So this is the Mono 100, and then the Mono Professional, and then the 8900. But again, it's not quite a fair comparison because this is ranked at a softer grade than these two. So. How would I rank them based on some different characteristics? Um, based on the looks, let's see if I can get my tripod out of the way here. 
Oh, whatever. Still not in the corner, but we'll, we'll go with it. So based on looks, I actually like the Mono Professional a little bit more than the Mono 100. So if I were to rank them based on looks, you know, up here being the highest and down here being the lowest, I would rank them like this. I really hate the green of the 8900. I know for some people they really like it, and if it were the color that it's showing up on camera, I might like it, but it's kind of that ugly drab color and I don't like it at all. And I also don't like that it doesn't have a capped end. I prefer a capped end on a eraserless pencil. So in terms of looks, I would rank the Mono Professional highest, then the Mono 100, then the 8900. And I think that's just because I really like this bold, um, bold white band on the bottom here that has the grain on it. I find that to be super classy looking. Um, and yeah, and, and I don't like, like I said, I don't like the roughness here and that just annoys me a lot. So that's the looks in terms of writing. I would reorder them like this, where I like the Mono 100 the most, but I think that's a bias because it's a 2B lead. I find that 2B tends to be my comfort zone. So I think I'm a little bit biased there. I think if these were in 2B, it might be a different story but I do like the way this writes the best. It's a nice, dark, clean, crisp line. And then these two would tie, I would say. Like, um, both of them write pretty smoothly. They write of about equal darkness, and I don't have any problems with either of them. So I would say they tie, and that's why I think if I had one of these in a 2B, it might, you know, maybe tie with this one. So it might just be a difference in grade there. They all write pretty smoothly, and none of them gave me any problems with writing. In terms of the cost, these are actually ranked appropriately. Um, so the Tombow Mono 100 is a very expensive pencil. I mean, it is more expensive than Black Wings. So a dozen of these is gonna run you about $28. Um, and I got that price from Jet Pens as of the end of October, 2015. So it's about $28 a dozen, which makes them roughly uh, I think 230 or 235 a pencil, something like that is what I've seen for them individually. So, and the black wings are a little bit less than two dollars a pencil. So this is not a cheap pencil. It's their flagship pencil, and you're gonna pay for it appropriately. The Mono Professional um, runs about fifteen dollars a dozen. I saw that price on Amazon. And I think I saw them about $1.50 if you're gonna buy them individually through different um, outlets. So, you know, it's a decent amount cheaper than the Mono 100. It's coming in, you know, a little bit below a black wing, but more than, you know, a cheap pencil. And then the 8900 is gonna run you about $10 a dozen. So it's about, I think I saw it for 80 cents a pencil if you're gonna buy them individually. So this is still not a cheap pencil, you know, you're still paying $10 a dozen, which puts it up, uh, I mean, these two are both kind of in the range of like a Palomino HB, um, they kind of are on either side of, of the Palomino HB cost, and and I'd say they're, they're about right, you know, this one I would say writes as well as the Palomino HB, but I don't like the looks as much, I feel like, you know, the lack of an end cap kind of means that they cheaped out a little bit on the looks. And this one, you know, again, writes about as well as a Palomino HB, but the looks are a little bit nicer. Like, it looks like a little bit more attention went into the details for the looks. So if I had to rank them overall, assuming that I could get them all in the same grade, my ranking would go similar to my ranking for the looks. Partly because they all write so nicely, but I would definitely put the um, Mono Professional first, and then the Mono 100, and then the 8900. So I doubt I will ever buy any more 8900s. They're a nice pencil, and maybe if I was in a situation where I was gonna be giving out pencils and I wanted people to have something a little bit nicer, maybe I'd go with that. Um, but for my own personal use, if I were to buy another dozen of one of these three pencils, I'd probably go with the Mono Professional. I actually put it on my Christmas list because you know, my parents are always like, what do you want for Christmas? And especially living so far away now, I need, you know, if they want to get me a little something, I need something that's, you know, going to be small to fit in a suitcase. So I was like, yeah, sure, a dozen pencils. So um, I actually put these on my Christmas list. So that kind of tells you that, yeah, I wouldn't mind more of them, but, you know, I'm not rushing out to buy more of them either because I have plenty of other pencils. But I would definitely pick the Mono Professional 
um, both for cost and looks, then the Mono 100 purely for the looks, and then put the Mono 8900 at the bottom. But if you're concerned about cost and you still want to get a nice pencil and you don't care about the looks, the 8900 is a really good pencil, sharpened up nicely, writes nicely. I have no complaints other than that I don't like the color of it and I don't like that there's not an end cap. So take that for what it is. And I hope this maybe helped if you were trying to pick one of these guys. And yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.